Hi AQA biologists, I just wanted to wish you all the luck in the world for your paper one exam tomorrow. Trilogy, Synergy, Triple Scientists, you are going to be so, so good. So here are my last minute tips. First of all, please don't panic. This is a great opportunity for you to show off everything you've been learning over the past five years, two years, however long you've been prepping for this. This is your opportunity to shine. Do make sure you're nice and rested before the exam. Have breakfast and drink lots of water to avoid any kind of headaches coming on. Make sure you read every single word in that question paper. Please don't skip over and go straight to part A, straight to part B. There'll be lots of useful info, particularly with you guys with your AQA paper. I'm sure you've noticed they do provide quite a lot of information. So, for example, if that's the difference between using stents and statins as treatment options for heart disease, you'll often get a table chock-a-block full of information and they'll ask you to draw upon that information as well as your own subject knowledge. So make sure you're doing that so that when you write that long six marker question, that you're filling your answers with lots of scientific detail. Do try to avoid repeating yourself and waffling because you won't be awarded as many marks. But for things like the stent statin, consider the ease of application. A statin is something that can be, it's a tablet so you consume, it's very easily taken, whereas a stent, requires quite major operations so you do have that risk of infection with a stent but equally it is a long-term solution so go through all those points either in the notes your teachers have given you or if you're using my revision guide or any other source make sure you've got lots of separate points to make now you will be asked about some required practicals so make sure you do look over those the microscope think about how you're going to set up your slide with your sample you're going to potentially use a scalpel to obtain a thin slither of onion pop it on your microscope slide potentially with a little bit of dye a cover slip place it on the stage of the microscope use the lowest power objective lens to begin with and then just increase it in order to bring that sample into focus Know the difference between electron and light microscopy. So what are the advantages of an electroscope? Largely that it's higher resolution, higher magnification, but it's a lot more difficult to use than the light microscope you might find in your science lab. Things like monoclonal antibodies. I know people don't like these, but in essence, remember that antibodies are produced by lymphocytes. They're very specific. So they bind to specific antigens that could be on a cancer cell, it could be on a pathogen. Now, because they're such useful substances, the whole point of a tumor cell being introduced is a tumor cell reproduces really quickly. So if you combine your tumor cell with your lymphocyte to form a hybrid cell, a hybridoma, then you end up with some wonderful characteristics whereby you have lots and lots of antibodies being produced that can be used therapeutically. So for example, if you attach them to a dye on one end, they'll bind to the antigen you're interested in on the other end. So that's why they can be used in things like pregnancy testing. Equally, if you attach one end of an antibody to a chemical, that can be used to kill cancer cells. So they've got a wide range of uses. So do make sure you're happy with monoclonal antibodies. The same is true with things like therapeutic cloning and stem cells. I can't talk about all these things here, but I do want you to go back through and look at those kind of more difficult topics, the monoclonal antibodies, the cell cycle. Do you know the difference between interphase mitosis and cytokinesis? If you're not sure, I think today is a good opportunity to go off and check your notes. Last thing to do with variables, please make sure you've learned the difference between independent, dependent and control variable. An independent variable is something that you change, could be temperature. The dependent variable is something that you actually measure, something physical that you could use a ruler or a measuring balance to determine its mass of. The control variables are what you keep the same in order to increase the validity of your experiment. Reliability is all about increasing the number of repeats. So yeah, make sure you're happy with your variables. Right guys, I hope you found this video super helpful. Good luck. Make sure you answer every single question, read every word. Remember the person marking your paper has no idea who you are. So if you're normally quite shy and nervous about getting your answer wrong, please leave that behind outside of the exam room. It is your time to answer every single point because after all, you can't get any marks if you leave it blank. 
anyway i'm gonna make another video tomorrow to find out how you guys got on so come leave me a comment then